party people. So we are back in Ruth and we are chugging along here in chapter two. This is where the story starts getting interesting. It is Ruth is a, a book with only four chapters. So in the first chapter, we talked about how Naomi's family ended up in Moab, what that looked like, how Naomi ended up alone, how Ruth followed her back to Bethlehem, and then they get back to Bethlehem, right? So it's this idea of, in the very first chapter, when you look at it from a quick perspective, what are the things that happen? Well, Naomi and her family leave the promised land of God. So this is almost a symbolic way of saying that they stepped away from the promises of God and they weren't trusting that the promised land was good enough. So they went away. They took foreign wives, right? This is another interesting point because the foreign wife, Ruth, is the one that actually comes back and is the instrument of Naomi's redemption. And so it's it's an example of how God takes things that we do that are imperfect or not correct. That's not the right thing to do. The right thing back then would have been for her to stay in Bethlehem, abide by God's promise, by, you know, find a nice local girl for her sons to all that. But she didn't do that. They went to another place. God brought them back. And so here we are in chapter two. We're going to get through all of chapter two in one video. It might be a, a little bit longer. We'll see how it goes. But uh, with that, you know, Naomi has just gotten back to Bethlehem. Her and Ruth have to figure out a way to make a living. And so with that, we're in chapter two. We're going to read verses one through seven. Now, Naomi had a relative of her husband's, a worthy man of the clan of Elimelech, whose name was Boaz. And Ruth the Moabite said to Naomi, let me go to the field and glean among the ears of grain after him, in whose sight I shall find favor. And she said to her, go, my daughter. So she set out and went and gleaned in the field after the reapers. She happened to come to the part of the field belonging to Boaz, who was of the clan of Elimelech. So, uh, well, so verse four, and behold, Boaz came from Bethlehem and he said to the reapers, the Lord be with you. And they answered, the Lord bless you. Then Boaz said to his young man who was in charge of the reapers, whose young woman is this? And the servant who was in charge of the reapers answered, she is the young Moabite woman who came back with Naomi from the country of Moab. She said, please let me glean and gather among the sheaves after the reapers. So she came and she has continued from early morning until now, except for a short rest. So she's been a diligent worker. So we'll break this down real quick. So Naomi had a husband. It reiterates that Boaz is the relation is a relation of her husband, you know, her uh, would the husband that she's a widow of Elimelech. So it's setting this up. Naomi knows of Boaz. When Ruth goes out, she asks Naomi for permission. Is this the right thing to do? Naomi says, yes, go, go along. So she says, this is what we do here. If you're a widow or orphan, or then you go behind the reapers and you gather grain. That's the legal thing to do. What's important here is that this is the time of judges. People weren't following all the legal rules. And so the fact that Boaz had a field and that we'll expand on this in a little bit, but Naomi is saying, look, follow the law of the land. We're in need. Here's how you do it. If you're willing to work, you will find food. And so they go out and they do that. Boaz comes in and it presents Boaz as a law abiding man. He greets the reapers. Um, where does it say that? Behold, he said to the reapers, the Lord be with you. And they answered, the Lord bless you. So it, again, it's showing Boaz as this man kind of after God's own heart. He's trying to do things the right way. And he's a diligent housekeeper. He's saying, who are these people? And he finds out who's in his field. Um, on top of this, again, they're identifying Ruth as a foreign woman here, but they're not kicking her out because of that. In fact, if anything, they're actually extra nice to her because of this. So, which we'll see more evidence of in a little bit. And the guy gives a good report. He says, she's actually been a really diligent worker today. So she's, she's doing a good job. She had a short rest, but she's been all right. So we're in verses eight through 13. Then Boaz said to Ruth, now listen, my daughter, do not go to glean in another field or leave this one, but keep close to my young women. Let your eyes be on the field that they are reaping and go after them. Have I not charged the young men not to touch you? When you are thirsty, go to the vessels and drink what the young men have drawn. Then she fell on her face, bowing to the ground and said to him, why have I found favor in your eyes that you should take notice of me since I'm a foreigner? But Boaz answered her, all that you've done for your mother-in-law since the death of your husband has been fully told to me and how you left your father and mother in your native land 
and came to a people that you did not know before. The Lord repay you for what you have done, and a full reward be given you by the Lord, the God of Israel, under whose wings you have come to take refuge. Then she said, I have found favor in your eyes, my Lord, for you have comforted me and spoken kindly to your servant, though I am not one of your servants. So again, it's, it's pointing this out that it is a time. He's saying, look, don't go to some other field where you're going to get, you know, uh, assaulted or worse. Just stay here where you know you're going to be safe. I've instructed every, I've set it up. You're welcome here, you know, and I've heard about the good things that you've done and I'm going to help you. You're helping yourself. I'm going to help you. And so it's, there's also some foreshadowing here because he says, the Lord repay you for what you have done and a full reward be given you by the Lord, the God of Israel. So he's saying, I hope that you are fully restored at some point for the hardships that you've endured. So then we go on verses 14 through 16. And at mealtime, Boaz said to her, come here and eat some bread and dip your morsel in the wine. So she sat beside the reapers and he passed to her roasted grain and she ate until she was satisfied and she had some left over. When she rose to glean, Boaz instructed his young men saying, let her glean even among the sheaves and do not reproach her and also pull out some from the bundles for her and leave it for her to glean and do not rebuke her. So he's actually saying, be extra generous here. Let her, you know, harvest, not just glean, but he's saying, let her glean even among the sheaves. Like, let her pick what she wants and don't don't rebuke her for it. And in fact, he's saying, look, if, if she's shy, literally take some out and throw it on the ground. She won't be able to miss the hint that this is for you. So again, there's a generosity here. Boaz is obviously a man of... Uh, means, a certain amount of means. We don't know if he's rich or not, uh, but he has means and he's trying to do the right thing here. He's trying to follow the law in a generous way. I think that's, again, pointing to the fact that the law in its intent is to be restorative. It is to restore things and to provide for people that are willing to provide for themselves and to try to make things right for the community. Uh, And there's a certain amount of generosity here. So verses... 17 through 23. So she gleaned in the field until evening. Then she beat out what she had gleaned, and it was about an ephah of barley. She took it up and went into the city. Just real quick side note, an ephah is about five and a half gallons. It would be like a big bucket of uh, barley flour. So she took it and went into the city. Her mother, mother, her mother-in-law saw what she had gleaned. She also brought out and gave her what food she had left over after being satisfied. Her mother-in-law said to her, where did you glean today? And where have you worked? Blessed be the man who took notice of you. So she told her mother-in-law with whom she had worked and said, the man's name with whom I work today is Boaz. And Naomi said to her daughter-in-law, may he be blessed by the Lord whose kindness has not, not forsaken the living or the dead. Naomi also said to her, The man is a close relative of ours, one of our redeemers. Ruth the Moabite said, Besides, he said to me, You shall keep close by my young men until they have finished all my harvest. And Naomi said to Ruth, her daughter-in-law, It is good, my daughter, and you go out with his young men, lest in another field you be assaulted. So she kept close to the young women of Boaz, gleaning until the end of the barley and wheat harvest, and she lived with her mother-in-law. So again, right here at the end, we're seeing a lot of insight into, it's the juxtaposition of what's happening in the time, the violence, the not treating women respectfully, all of these different things happening. There's also the idea of the law right? This idea of the law being restorative, it it's just keeps going, right? This generosity, this, and the fact of the, the law is that Naomi's realizing or, or has realized before this or that Boaz is one of the redeemers. And so the, the way of redemption was that if a man died without a male heir, there was nobody to take over the family farm, so to speak, or to protect and provide. There was no male heir. And so the Uh, brother or closest relative of the family would actually provide an heir to that family so that they could continue on in the inheritance. Um, The lineage in the Jewish tradition comes from the mother's side, but the inheritance obviously is also a big part of that, and they needed a male heir to do that. Without that, Naomi and Ruth still, they have nothing going forward. 
they're not going to have a family. They're not going to have uh, a lineage or a heritage or anything to pass on. And so there's you can kind of see where this is going now. We've already had one instance up above where Boaz is saying, you know, the Lord repay you for what you have done in full. And then later on, there's this idea that Boaz is a redeemer. And so Naomi and Ruth are very grateful for this generosity. So the story's kind of turned here a little bit. It seems that there's kind of some kind of hopeful, there's glimmers of hope here that are, that are happening here. And we'll get into this a little bit more. But the hope isn't for Naomi. The hope com- or doesn't come through Naomi. The hope is for Naomi, but it actually comes from a foreign woman, an outsider, a foreigner, all nations, so to speak. Um, somebody from outside of Israel. There's Israel, there's all nations. It's somebody from outside that's been brought in. So we do see this, Boaz being a very generous provider, and we also see kind of uh, a narrative starting to develop about how the law is used to restore people. Um, So that is chapter two. That's all I've got. Let me know down below if you had a favorite part of chapter two or something that stood out to you or that you really liked about it. Like and subscribe to catch all the videos as they come out. And with that, we're going to jump into chapter three, which is the tawdry tale of the threshing floor. And we're going to talk a little bit about whether they're are sexual undertones or not, if it's a romance story, if it's not, what's actually going to happen next is pretty interesting. So anyways, I'll catch you over there. Um, That's all I've got. Peace.